Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> All right. Happy Juneteenth. It's another birthday for freedom. Thank you. Good. My name is Alex Pratt, and I'm here because of Tilly Henson. Some 46 years ago, at College of the Mainland, I gave my first lecture on slavery at this site right here at the auditorium. So this is a little history, a whole lot of history. Again, thank you for coming out this afternoon, and we welcome you through our, to our entertainment. I would like to introduce, for greetings, Dr. Vicki Stanfield, and she will welcome us to College of the Maine. Give her a hand, please. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, gosh. Well, good afternoon. It's so wonderful to see so many students here and also so many members of our community. I am very, very pleased to say welcome to you from our president, Dr. Albright, who expressed his very sad uh, apologies that he could not be here to do this himself. He uh, just joined us about four days ago, and he had uh, an emergency appointment that he had to it was some, like his ophthalmologist. He had to do it because he's looking at the computer so much he can't see. And he had to get his glasses uh, changed. And the appointment time was at this very time. So I don't think he would mind me expressing that to you because he shared that story with me. So I hope he can come in a little bit later and uh, you will get a chance to meet him. But if not, I know there will be other opportunities to do so. But on, half, on behalf of Dr. Albright and our administration and the Board of Trustees, I, I want to say welcome, and today is a very important day, uh, a very important Juneteenth celebration that College of the Mainland partakes in each year, and we're so excited that so many members of our community are here. I uh, wanted to give you just a few comments. Uh, Juneteenth, I, I'm sure everybody in the audience, I don't have to remind you, but of course it reminds us of, of the ending of slavery in the United States, and it it gives us an opportunity to really acknowledge all of the cultural contributions of African Americans, and there are so many. It would take days and days and semesters to really uh, give you a full list of those and for us to all understand all of those contributions, but we're going to hear from some of those today through our speakers. But it also gives us an opportunity to pause and think about what it means as an institution when we honor our multicultural community. And so I thought it would be appropriate just to look real briefly at our mission statement, our vision, and our, a couple of our values that are very important today. College of the Mainland is a learning-centered, comprehensive community college dedicated to student success and the intellectual and economic enrichment of the diverse communities we serve. And our, our, our vision is that we will be a valued and vital community partner in enriching our community and preparing our students to thrive in a diverse, dynamic, and global environment. And as well, two of our values that I'm going to really stress that we really take to heart is our valuing mutual respect and civility, as well as diversity and inclusion. So as I was asked to make this introduction, I thought to myself, well, okay, it's good that we have those value statements, and okay, we have those missions and those, uh, uh, the vision statement, but really and truly, what is it that makes the measure? Is it the words on the paper, or is it the action? And I, it always made me think about hearing that a person's character is really not so much as what is said, but by the actions of that person. And we can think about that in terms of our institution. So where does College of the Mainland put its money where its mouth is? I guess that's kind of the way I've always liked to express it. You know, don't just tell me, show me. So I wanted to let you know. So how does this happen? How do we know? Well, it starts at the policy level. We have a policy in place that when we hire, we address diversity in our search and our selection process for full-time positions. And also, all of our employees, as part of their onboarding process, take a, a module on understanding discrimination and diversity and inclusion and 
every two years, all of our employees have to, the opportunity to view this again. So that's one of the things that we're doing, that we really are going above and beyond. And as well, our HR department leads a wonderful day-long workshop called Community of Respect. This is an opportunity for our employees to come together. The training stresses our values and commitment to inclusion and, and diversity with the goal of creating a college culture that truly is a, co a community of respect. And up to, to this date, we have about 100 employees that went through that training. I was one of those fortunate people to participate, and it, it, I can truly tell you that it's a wonderful opportunity. And as well, we really take it to heart that we want our supervisors to be well trained and understanding about what is it to serve and so this year, we're also focusing on a year-long training that is on servant leadership that is going to introduce the characteristics of being a servant leader. And again, this is so that we can serve our students more effectively and become even a stronger community of respect. Today's activity is funded through a multicultural budget, and this is I've been at other community colleges, and this is the first of its kind. I'm really, really impressed. I've been here three years. I've gotten to participate in these activities. And just to let you know that our uh, staff work very hard to provide these opportunities to bring speakers onto the campus so that we can also look at the rich diversity that's in our community and really appreciate every contribution of each ethnicity and each diverse population who is part of our community. And more recently, we've even gotten an HSI grant. This is a Hispanic Serving Institution grant. Now, you may say, oh, well, is that going to help Hispanic students and Latinos only? No, no. This is the federal government giving us money so that we can serve every student, so that we can expand our programs and our services that will help every student be successful. So we're very, very excited about that. We're working on that. We just got started. It's a five-year project. I'm sure many of you know, sitting in the audience, many of our community members, you know, working with your youth, that our males are somehow disappearing in higher education. You know, we have about a 60-40 split, mostly females, about 40% males. And it even gets lower when we look at our African-American males and our men of color. So we've got an initiative that we're working on. It's called a Minority Male Initiative, and we've got a lot of great things going right now to help our male students to be uh, successful in higher education. And uh, we're not leaving out the females. I don't want any females to think we're not being, we're being discriminatory in that way, but we're really focusing a lot right now on trying to gear up in helping our males recognize their value to our institution. And um, in the fall, many of you might be students that are in um, the schools in our service area. We have a Man Up conference that will be recruiting male students, juniors and seniors, from our area high schools who will be coming for a day-long conference in October. So we're very excited about that. We've got a lot of energy around it. And last but not least, student life. For the students in the room, I hope you know that engagement on the campus is extremely important to your completion. And we've got a lot of various student clubs and organizations. And our oldest club, the Organization of African American Culture that started in the 70s, is active this year and is full scale moving forward and giving students opportunities. Any student that's interested in joining that organization is certainly offered the opportunity. And lastly, our Hispanic Student Club is another way in which we're looking at how our students can become leaders on this campus. So these are just a few of the ways that College of the Mainland is really focusing on diversity and inclusion. And we believe it speaks truly to the dedication that we have in creating a workplace and community of respect. So I hope that this gives you a little bit better understanding of some of the things that we're doing at a level that we really are intentional about serving all of our students. We're very excited about having each and every one of you here today, and I'm looking forward to the presentations, and please let me know if there's anything we can do, and welcome to our campus, and thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. thank you very much.
Today we are fortunate. Michael? No. I can holler loud enough. <laughs> Today we are here to celebrate what's called Juneteenth. It's a Texas holiday. It started in Texas. It is now throughout the United States. In fact, you can go to Denver, Colorado today, and they're probably celebrating Juneteenth this weekend. You can go to California, the same thing. Now, I happened to run into a young lady in New Orleans from North Dakota, and she was talking about celebrating Juneteenth in North Dakota. Now, you can't imagine what they knew about slavery or about Juneteenth, but they needed an excuse to have a holiday. So there is a, a lot of information out on Juneteenth. And usually when someone say, what about Juneteenth? I just, here's my notebook on Juneteenth. So we can spend a lot of lots of time, but we're not going to do that today. We're going to have a young man that's going to come up and tell us a little bit about Juneteenth. Yes, sir. Come on up. Samuel Parada. Okay, good enough. Didn't want to misspell his, mispronounce his name. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is always a pleasure to have so many faces and so many people from the community come out to support College of the Mainland. My name is Samuel Parada. I'm the current Student Government Association president, and I'll be serving my first term starting this August. So before I begin, um, I'm going to talk to you about the history of Juneteenth, and Juneteenth is the oldest known celebration of the ending of slavery in the United States. The Emancipation Proclamation, which had very little impact on Texans due to the minimal number of Union troops to enforce the new executive order. However, within the surrender of General Lee in April of 1865, the forces were finally strong enough to influence and overcome the resistance. Two and a half years after President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, which had become official on January 1st, 1863, the Union soldiers led by Major General Gordon Granger landed in Galveston, Texas on June 19th, 1865, with news that the war had ended and that the enslaved were now free. Juneteenth today celebrates African-American freedom and achievement while encouraging continuous self-development and respect for all cultures. Places such as the Smithsonian Institute, the Henry Ford Museum, and others have begun sponsoring Juneteenth-centered activities. In recent years, a number of local and national Juneteenth organizations have joined the cause to take their place alongside other organizations. As it takes on a more national, symbolic, and even global perspective, the event of 1865 in Texas are not forgotten for all the roots that tie back to the fertile soil on which a National Day of Pride is growing. Getting involved in supporting Juneteenth celebrations creates a new bond of friendship and understanding among us. This indeed brightens our future, and that is the spirit of Juneteenth. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Have you have, you'd be a future historian, huh? <laughs> ah. But we'd like to make one addition to that. There's always been sort of a misunderstanding about what events led to Juneteenth. Uh, we talk about a document called the Emancipation Proclamation, issued by Lincoln somewhere around 1863, that freed slaves in territories occupied by the Confederacy. The key, freed slaves in areas occupied by the Confederacy. How would those people hear about it? The only thing we really had gone was telegraph, and come on, how much exposure did we have to telegraph? So in, in reality, that was more of a military move and a political move than actual freedom. The general orders from General Granger that was issued out in Galveston talked about this area of slaves being free. It was not until the end of the year, 1863, with the 13th Amendment to the Constitution, that slaves were really free in the United States, period. So sort of keep that order in mind. Uh, if you go to the celebration at Ashton Villa this coming weekend, uh, you will hear a lot of those stories being told, and someone would say, Ashton Villa. Well, historians question historical, supposedly, facts. Did it actually happen at Ashton Villa? Did Gordon Granger, in reality, 
step off the boat and made an announcement or did they just post it on the post and that's it. So those are some of the things you want to listen to and when you're reading materials, there's a whole lot of interpretation. But the bottom line is, yes, we are free and we will celebrate our freedom and we'll continue to celebrate it. The next young lady, Mr. Keisha Green. Where is she? Oh, okay. She was a young lady that was supposed to have sung for us last year, I believe. And so after a year waiting, she finally got here. <laughs> Ms. Green, welcome. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It is such a privilege and an honor to be in this celebration with you on today. And I have my good friend with me, Minister Jay Bass, who has taken out of his time to play for me on his birthday. So happy birthday, Minister Bass, and thank you from the bottom of my heart. Amazing grace shall always be my song of
excellent voices must run in the family. It happens to be Tilly Mae's uh, daughter-in-law. Okay. So we know why she's so talented. Oh, I don't know about that. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And look, next time you come back, for next year, uh, bring Oh Happy Day with you. <laughs> That's my favorite. Okay. Got so many pieces. Now we're going to have entertainment by James B. Thomas Clef Club. And we want them to get started, and they can tell us a little bit more about themselves. And by the way, you have evaluations that were given to you when you came in. Don't forget to fill them out. This is the best way we can get finances from the people in administration by you all filling out this and saying how good it is.
few songs for you.
and and we gonna do it real fast. We gonna do it real fast. Uh, Mr. Thomas, are you related to the Reverend Thomas? Reverend Thomas was my dad. Reverend Thomas was his dad. The beginning of the celebration of Juneteenth in Galveston and Ashton Villa is his dad's responsibility. He started it in Galveston. He also attended College of the Mainland, by the way. Good enough. Well, Reverend Thomas, of course, was a icon in Galveston, and he's responsible for the current celebration at Ashton Villa, which is occurring this coming Saturday. So if you're free Saturday morning, go over to Ashton Villa. The, the folks who are responsible for Juneteenth, even the state holiday itself, will be there. And there's a free breakfast while you're at it. It's pretty good. Okay, good enough. Now, we've had... In Galveston, although we talk about Avenue L Baptist Church, the Holy Rosary Catholic Church was the first black Catholic church in Texas. The Reedy Chapel, of course, was another first church, and there's a celebration that goes on there. The march from the old county courthouse to Reedy's Chapel, where supposedly announcements were being made about freedom. So we're looking at a long range of events that happened in Galveston County. I mean, we celebrated Juneteenth, the folks in Galveston, by coming to Dickinson, riding the train. It cost about the 60 cents round trip to go to Dickinson to celebrate Juneteenth. <laughs> Not bad. 15 cents for kids. And that's where the celebration occurred. Now, 
a person who's definitely responsible for the leading of folks to freedom. A young lady, of course, that we know as Harriet, I'm sorry, Tudman, done by Melissa Wadi Thibodeau. I got that one correct. Ms. Thibodeau, come forward, please, as our next entertainer. Ms. Harriet Tudman. Give her a hand, please, so we can bring her in. Moses, way down in Egypt lane, I'm going to tell you, Pharaoh, you got to let my people go. Oh, hey, Cadden, ain't all y'all going to be in here? Y'all, y'all come to this hide out place like I done, huh? Y'all all want to get free, huh? I, I take you there. It calls me Head Tubman. I hear tell, uh, sissy, I, I hear tell this lot of them out here don't really know, don't really understand what the Underground Railroad really was all about. They think it was some kind of choo-choo train. <laughs> yeah, the youngins, them little ones, they think it was some kind of choo-choo train rolling up under the ground, and they think that fella, what, what's that fella name they all know? They all know his name. What is, oh yeah, Martin Luther King. They think he was driving the train under the ground, and that was the Underground Railroad. <laughs> Lord have mercy, the, the children got it all confused, y'all. They, they don't understand. And don't you old folks, don't you think the children, don't you think they deserve to know the truth? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. That's what I say. Can't have them youngins running around here not knowing where they come from. How y'all, how y'all expect for them to know which way to go? If and they don't know, they passed. Y'all's got to tell them. Oh Lord, y'all know we couldn't write nothing down. Couldn't read either. Well, I never did learn myself. But we passed on these stories. One generation to the other. And they want to say the quilt code ain't true because they can't find nothing wrote down about it, sonny. Well, heck, you ain't going to never find nothing wrote down about it. Who supposed to wrote it down, huh? The slave master? Lord have mercy. See, cheering. Miss Hadd ain't going to tell y'all no lie. Y'all been lied to too much already. I gonna tell you the truth. That's the only thing gonna set you free. The truth. I remember late that night when I decided I gonna get my freedom. It was dark outside, I tell you. So dark, couldn't see your hands in front of your face. And I looked at that front gate. Something come over me. I don't know what it was. I got to shaking and feeling warm inside. And well, next thing I know, I could have running. I could have running right between them gates. I got to running and running and running. I, I, I kept on running. I ain't stop. Mouse will catch up with you, you stop. I must have run about four, five days, day and night. Hiding in the bushes at night time. <laughs> Daytime, I hide in the bushes too. But when the coast was clear, I run like hell. Yeah, I done. And then I got tired. Oh, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I got tired. I got scared. I, I didn't know which way to go. I sit down up under this tree here, and I looks around and... I see all these houses, but I, I seen them houses about two, three days ago. 
Lord, have mercy. I, I've been going around in circles all that time. <laughs> Oh, Lord, I was lost. I didn't know which way was north to south to east to west. I, I didn't know which way to go. Now, what was Miss Head me going to do? Sit there and cry? I heard my mama's voice. I heard her telling me to pray to the good Lord whenever I be in trouble. That's just what I done. I stood there in that field that day. And I prayed as hard as I could. I ain't want to get caught. I figured he was the only one that could help me. Wasn't, no there, wasn't nobody else around. I said, Lord, now you know, if they catches me, they're going to hang me on the highest tree, Lord. Don't let them hound dogs get me, Lord, please. <laughs> help me, Lord. And I sit there. Crying and sweating, and, but I, I knew the Lord was going to help me out. At least that's what my mom had told me. I could just hear her voice singing that song. She always sang that was her favorite. Oh. <laughs> that wasn't the song. <laughs> Nah, nah, that, that's something about y'all got these days. <laughs> yeah, 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 y'all, y'all know the name of that, huh? I don't sure know. <laughs> My mom never heard nothing like that. <laughs> Her song was more like this here, like. Amen. 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 Oh, oh, mama sing that all over and over out there in the cotton fields all day long under that hot sun and all the slavery was bad, y'all. But we come through it, see? How y'all figure y'all get here today? Oh yeah, they went through a lot. But I remember one night, after I got free, I got up to Philadelphia. I went to see that fella, Mr. Uh, uh, William Steele. He the headquarter man for the Underground Railroad. See, he write down everybody name come through there. They tell him where they come from, where they was, a slave, see, and uh, well, uh, he he give me money, so I go back get my mama. See, w when I get free, I I was so happy. I got to this place they called uh, what's it called, Canada? Yay! You all heard of Canada? Everybody say Canada. Yeah, yeah that's it, that's it. <laughs> Ooh, Lord, here, Bushy. We called it the Promised Land. Because when you get there, you promise you're going to be free. Oh, I couldn't believe my eyes that day. I had to look at my hands, make sure they was the same hands I started out with. Thank you, Lord. I knew, I knew you answered my prayer. And from that day on, I trusted in the good Lord. Every step I made, I trusted in him. Oh, yeah, I done. They had bounties on me. Thousands of dollars. Had Tubman. Wanted. Dead or alive. Catch a runaway slave. Oh, but the good Lord saw fit. They, they never did catch me. <laughs> no, they never did. Then come the Civil War. Whole lot of them slaved up colored folks. They went and fought for this here country, thinking they was going to get their freedom when they come back home, you know, and when they get back. Well, fella told me they found a lot of them hanging in trees. Lord, yo, we got to do something. I ain't 
come here today. I ain't come here today to tell y'all all no stories about me. How we kept them little ones quiet on that underground. See that one over there making that noise now? <laughs> she be making that noise. We out there in the middle of the night. We all gonna get caught. <laughs> we had to give them babies something to quiet them down. You know, some of you folks in here might know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Talking about that pair of gork. No. Lodnum. You know what I'm talking about, sissy? Some of y'all know about your great grandmama she used it. When you get sick in the stomach and all, y'all know what I'm talking about. Pierre Gorg. They come from the opium plant. Oh yeah, we kept some of that with us all the while. Them babies get to whining and crying. We get that Pierre Gorg come in a batter and we put it on the, the baby's lips and they lick it off. Boy, once they lick it all off, them little whippersnappers go to sleep. <laughs> they stay asleep, uh, they stay asleep about four, five days. <laughs> oh yeah, we had to keep them quiet. None of us wanted to go back to slavery. We wanted to get the youngins to freedom so they could grow up free. Oh, Lord have mercy. I must have danced me a jig that day when I found out I was on free land. I was so happy, y'all. <laughs> oh, I forget. Y'all don't get all excited about that no more. That's because y'all already free, right? <laughs> yeah. Is you really free? Well, I've been watching down here. I seen y'all all. Good Lord took me home back in 19 and 13. Uh, that pneumonia got hold to me. Uh, I couldn't shake it off. I was 93 years old. I was glad to go home to my maker. But he let me come back here. Resurrected me. Because I got a message I won't tell y'all. I, I see the cheering out there running around. Some of them lost, just like I was. Don't know their way. Ain't got nobody to direct them. That's why I had to lead them up north. They didn't know their way. I could have saved a thousand more than I saved if they just would have known that they were slaves. See, she, she, they didn't know. I remember this big buck. He was almost big as you, yeah. <laughs> he get to the water. We are all waiting to run all across that water. Other side be closer to freedom. And that big buck froze up. Standing there at that water, bucking his eyes and shaking and shivering and snotting all on himself. I looked at him, I said, boy, what's wrong with you? I thought you wanted your freedom. He said, yeah, I did, Miss Head, but oh, I skated that water. I can't swim none. I think I'll go back, Miss Head. <laughs> I, I, I'd be safe with mouse. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to get in that water. I skated. I skated, Miss Head, I skated. <laughs> That boy commenced to crying and all, making all that noise. I ain't know nothing else good to do. I had to encourage him some. <laughs> I give him a pistol out, I said, boy, you get across that river right now, I'm gonna blow your head off. Get on, I said. Oh, he saw that pistol, he got on cross there, all right. <laughs> and when he get to the other side, he turned around and looked back and looked at his legs, he, he figured it out. The water didn't come nowhere but to right here. <laughs> he wasn't scared of no water no more after that day. And, and you know what that big buck done? 
He turned around once I got him free. Came back to get his mama, his pappy, all his family. See, I wasn't the only conductor. There was many more. But y'all ain't gonna never know about them because we have nobody write the story down. See, it, 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 it wasn't for this little white woman. Her name be Miss Say. What the heck is that? <laughs> y'all got all these contraptions today. No wonder y'all can't pay no attention. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Where was I? Yeah, it's funny, ain't it, baby? I tell you, these grown folks, what we gonna do with them? See, uh, I come to talk to y'all, mostly. Y'all's the future, you know? And, and, and we need all of y'all real bad. Uh, Miss Head come to tell you, I starting up something for y'all. It's called the new Underground, reading railroad. How many of y'all can read and write? Raise your hand. Oh, that's good. That's real good. I, I, I'm proud of y'all. I, I sure wish I could have learned how to read and write like y'all. Back in my day, it was against the law. They cut your hand off. They catch you with a book in it. Call yourself going to read something. I sure would have liked to have one of them things y'all had. What's they called? Uh, teacher. Y'all got one of them? You got one? Yes, ma'am. You got one too? Oh, that's good. I wished I would have had me one. I, I could have learned how to read and write, and I could have wrote better notes, and I, I could have done a whole lot. I, but I took them north to south. East to West. I showed them the promised land. <laughs> Cheering. Miss Head, won't y'all do one thing? I see y'all out here. It's a lot of y'all they got down there, down yonder. You know that place I'm talking about, Sonny? Where they taking them all, they taking them down there, that slave ship. On concrete down there. Where they taking all the cheering? I seen it with my own eyes. They got them cars all going around with them lights on them. They tricking you. They get you in them cars and you never go back to your mom and pappy. Slavery all over again. Come on. I, I want y'all to make me a promise here. Yeah? All you cheering. I want you to promise me you're going to read every day. And then you're going to turn around. Turn around like I done. Teach somebody else to read. You hear me? Raise your hand. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. All of y'all raise your hand. Get them up. Get your hands up. You too. You too. Get them up. You back there in the back. Get your hand up. Now y'all repeat after me for the sake of these cheering. Y'all make me a promise. I promise, Miss Head. And I was going to read more. Every day. Every day. And I promise. I I'm going to turn around. I'm going to gonna help somebody else to read. Somebody else to read. That's all I want to put your hands on down. Put them down. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> That's good, y'all. Now, if all of y'all could join together, love each other, take care of each other, we all come from the same history. When your ancestors was there, mine was there too. Y'all just got to tell y'all story. Because they couldn't write it down. Y'all got to take all them stories. Grandma, Told you, Grandpa told you, write them down for the cheering. Write them down. I thank y'all, cheering. I thank y'all for making that promise. 
Miss Head going to be watching over y'all. I'm coming, Lord, I'm coming. <laughs> I got to go. I, I just want to thank you. Y'all watch over these children here. Watch over the children. Don't let the hound dogs catch you. Come and fold, carry me home. Swing low. Y'all know that? Sing it with me then. Sweet carry on. Come before to carry me home. God bless y'all. That's all I got to say. Keep your promise. Keep your promise. Okay, before everybody starts moving around, you, uh, since this is a classroom, uh, yeah, there's one test question. The Underground Railroad ran from Vicksburg, Mississippi to Canada, underground. True or false? I'm gonna leave. Listen to the question. The Underground Railroad ran from Vicksburg to Canada, underground. Falls, come on. We had no tunnels running from Vicksburg to Canada. Don't have one today. Tilly, where are you? Come on. We must say the young lady was Miss Thibodeau was excellent. I enjoyed her. Give her another hand. I, I never get tired of hearing her. <laughs> I'm going to ask Ms. Loniker to come forward. She's actually the new multicultural team leader. I know a lot of you remember me uh, being the leader of the multicultural team for many years, but uh, the torch has been passed, but I co-partner uh, co uh, with yeah. her to get this event on the road, and she has done a magnificent role. Yeah and uh, making a lot of good things happen. Not only this, but a lot of the multicultural team events are now in her hand. And we would like to, at this time, just acknowledge all of our special guests, and thank you, Dr. Stanfield, for all of the great information that you shared with us today, and so that the community can be more informed and more aware of what College of the Mainland is all about, because this is your college, as well as all of the, uh, the individuals in the five districts of College of the Mainland, and we are so happy and pleased to have all of you here today. Lana, who would you have? And please remember the evaluation sheets. Uh, they're uh, picking them up at this time right now. And Ms. Lonica will have the last word. Okay. Well, thank you. I want to thank Tilly for all of her years of service and doing these multicultural events. Thank you so much, Tilly. We have lunch prepared for you outside uh, under the breezeway, so please turn in your surveys and exit either side and line up for lunch. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>